Hello everyone, welcome back to another Adobe Photoshop tutorial. In this one, I'm in Photoshop. I'm going to show you how to make a cartoon character or any character for that matter, make their hands or their limbs bend. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here we go. See, I'm bending the ears a little bit. I've got the, the uh, paw, this little paparoo uh, bending. It's very subtle and there are a few steps involved to get it right. So let's start from scratch and I will show you step by step. All right, so the first step, open up Photoshop. Do note that I am in Photoshop beta at the moment. The reason why is I'm going to be using generative fill, which is one of their AI, uh, their AI functionality. And unfortunately, it's not in the production version yet. So uh, I'm using the beta, and if you don't know where the beta is, you can always just go up here to the top, click on your little uh, Creative Cloud icon, and then just go down on the left side, and you'll see uh, betas here. So let's see, beta apps, that's the one. And then just make sure it's installed. Okay, so we're in Photoshop beta, although this should be out in production very shortly. First step, go into your finder, grab the file that you want to work on. So I'm going to grab this one here, and I'm just going to drag and drop it in, and it's just going to open up. Presto. Now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and I'm going to unlock it. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a duplicate copy. So I'm just going to drag and drop this layer right here on the little plus sign. You can also do uh, command or control J, but there we go. We've created a duplicate layer. Now we've got to pull him out. So I'm going to show you that step next. All right. So the next step is you want to go over to your left side here and grab one of your selection tools. When you do that, you'll see up here at the top that you have select subject. This is what we want. I'm going to click on this little down arrow and select cloud. Now that makes sure that I'm going to select the subject, but we're using the cloud server as opposed to the local uh, running it on our computers. Just a little bit more accurate. Once you've done that, click on select subject and it should take just a few seconds. And this should select your cartoon character or whatever you're working on. This looks pretty good overall, so I like that. Now the next step, and this is very, very important, and if you don't do this, you're going to have a, a little bit of trouble, is you want to go up here, you want to go to Select, and then you want to go to Modify, and then you want to go to Expand. And what we want to do is we want to expand the uh, marching ants or the selection out past the border. So in this case, I'm going to go with the expand by eight pixels and then I'll show you why we did that. So when I do that, you'll see here that we've expanded by eight pixels, just like I said there. But look, here's the the selection is now outside the lines. And the reason, oh, look, we missed a piece here. Let's go ahead and add that in. I'm just going to make sure I've got the quick selection tool selected and I just sort of scrubbed over top of that. And the reason why we want to do that is because now we're going to basically cut him out and then we're going to use generative fill. But if you if you go right to the edge and you don't go out past the edge like I am here, you're going to get some weird uh, hard lines that you don't want. So there we go. We've gone ahead and selected it. We've expanded it out approximately eight pixels. Now I'm going to go over here to the left side and I'm going to click on generative fill. Watch this. When I do that, I get the option to write something in. I'm going to leave it blank and then I'm going to click on generate. It'll take a few seconds. I'll come back, show you what we got. Excellent. So what's happened here is we've gone ahead and removed the uh, bulldog or the cartoon character. The reason why this is interesting, and I'll show you the few different options, but what we want is basically, this one looks good, is we want now to bring that character back, but this time when we warp and move the arms and the legs or the, or the ears or whatever, you're going to have a background that makes sense. If you don't have this, then you're going to have holes in your background and you're going to need to do all sorts of content aware fill, generative fill in later on. It's just a mess. So let's get on to the next step. All right, so we've got this nice, uh, the dog's missing here, or the cartoon's missing, and we've got this nice background. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move up this layer two or layer copy, and I'm going to put that on top of the uh, layer with the mask on it. When I turn it on or off, you'll see here that I've got this bulldog, and when I turn him off or her off, we've got this nice looking background that we just created. So let's turn it back on, and now the next step is you want to hold down the command key on a Mac, control key on a PC, and I'm just going to click on this mask. And the reason why I do that is when I do that, you're basically just loading the selection. So you'll see here that we've got the marching ants going around it again. So I've loaded that selection. And now, now that that's loaded, again, now we're on the top layer, we're going to go up here to edit, and then we're going to go to puppet warp. And when you do that, you'll see this crazy little puppet warp that's come 
only over the selection, which is why we did the Command J there. And what you'll see now is you'll see this little pin tool that's automatically selected. And I'm just going to go ahead and just start dropping some pins in. So watch this. I'm going to click right there. And I'm going to click right here. And I'm just going to show you the technique. I'm not going to go super far. So I'm going to put a couple pins on his nose, maybe one on his head, on his eyes, and his tongue, and something like that. So I'm just dropping pins kind of randomly. And presto. Now watch this, though. What we can do is when I hover over the pin, if I hover over top of one of these pins, now I'm just going to left click on it and pull. And you'll see here that this is basically me moving the character as I see fit. And you can add in more pins if you need certain things to move. In this one here, I've got his hand or his little paw here. I want that to go maybe out and to the left, but maybe that's a bit too much. So I would do something like that. And then maybe I could add a pin in here to make it look a little more believable. And then maybe his elbow type joint will come down and then I can hit you know, whatever. We can go with this, click enter, apply it, and then watch. So there is a, you know, we've moved his hands, we moved his ears, and if I hit command Z on a Mac to undo or control Z on a PC to undo, you can see here that this is how we move limbs inside Adobe Photoshop using the puppet tool, using generative fill, which is their new AI functionality, and uh, we just created a couple layers. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.